Gonna have to deal with a little bit of background noise, but uh, here we go. This is a four lady pump. I'm gonna cover it because it's the one we get more questions about. Uh, I gave a, a class on pressure radiator a couple weeks ago, seems like, posted it on YouTube, so I would say refer to that. The basic method that a pressure radiator works is the same whether it's on a transmission pump or a forklift hydraulics, tractor, three point, whatever. So if you look here, this regulator would be in a non-regulating position. Fluid gets picked up from the filter, comes through here, gets uh, spun by the pump gears, gets compressed, gets put out over here, and goes to the pressure regulator valve. So the gears are making flow. They go to the regulator valve to the top side. There's a spring on this end, and it pushes the regulator against the spring and opens the flow. There's a small orifice hole here. It feeds to the top of this valve and there's a plug that goes in the pump up here and a roll pin that holds the plug in right there so for this thing to regulate pressure the regulator has to move and crack open right there at that point point. and what that does is it allows the pressure to flow back into the suction side and gets recirculated all right we already covered that that's how our pressure regulator works lots of different ways to uh increase the spring pressure and load like with a boost valve or an adjustable pressure regulator that's all been covered what I want to show here is again this is your line pressure side this port here is your converter charge so this is what we call a dual stage regulator and it regulates pressure from the line pressure area there in the middle of the screen into this little uh, smaller port right here that then goes into the pump and works its way up to here in the case of a 4 pump and goes on to uh, a much more complicated circuit but the valve itself let me find it again it rolled away from me over here when it goes into regulating mode when it's regulating line pressure and it starts to crack open to recirculate the fluid you can also see that uh, it regulates into the converter charge circuit. It starts to crack open to that hole. Well, the issue is, in something with fixed line pressure or commanded to a higher line pressure, this valve doesn't open as far. And since it doesn't open as far to regulate the pressure, because it doesn't need to, because we're running higher pressure, it doesn't open up as much to regulate as much oil into the converter charge circuit. So on a 480, since the, uh, there's a lockup converter involved and the converter charge is what holds it out of lockup when it's not commanding lockup. So if you have in inadequate volume of oil, your lockup clutch will begin to apply and start to drag and bring the idle down. And the lower the idle is, the less that valve has to be regulated, the worse it gets. So if you have an issue with a converter dragging, sometimes uh, increasing the idle is a simple, simple fix. So I'm going to show you a couple different ways around that. One of the things we recommend that be done on a build is you drill a line to lube hole. You can see that small hole drilled there in the pump right through from, we drill it from the converter charge side, but you can see it there. It goes in the line pressure side. What it does is it allows volume of line pressure to always go here, no matter what the regulator position is. So you always have some flow. And hole size there varies from, some people drill it as small as about 50, 55 thousandths. We go a little bigger than that, uh, usually up to 93 thousandths. And we've found that 93 thousandths is the number that makes sure we always have enough converter flow. This is a Sunax line to lube pressure regulator valve. As if you look at it, you can see it goes on there. It makes that bypass happen in the valve. This hole is connected to the hole here in the middle and uh, it keeps charge going in there. And I believe it's check check valve, so it only flows one way. Pretty complicated little piece, somewhat expensive. Uh, you can get around that with the simple hole line to lube here. If you've already got the transmission together, obviously you're stuck with uh, doing something with the pressure regulator valve. I'm gonna cover that. 
this regulator valve, this area right here, some, some companies mill a flat on there to allow that leak from line to lube. And obviously Sunax has one with a controlled orifice in it as well. You can also machine the valve to uh, increase that flow. I think it's a little more complicated. We are uh, gonna start offering the valves pre-machined uh, off of our uh, CNC so that they're consistent. But that covers that and why you can have some problems on a 480 with line of lube. If you look at a 400 pump, it's very similar. 400 regulator valve opens up, it starts to regulate and recirculate the fluid from the line pressure side back to the suction side from right there, from this area back to the suction side when it opens up and at the same time it opens up, it regulates oil from line pressure into the converter charge circuit. It's pretty simple in this, it goes through this passage and comes out right here and around the outside of the stator to charge the uh, torque converter. But the way more simple converter circuit on the 400, but the way it originates at the regulator valve is the same. It's the same on a power glide, it's the same on a turbo 350, it's the same on a 4L60, 4L80, turbo 400, uh, 350. Obviously a 350 on a power glide, it happens in the valve body, not in the pump. But the way the regulator valve works and the way it charges the converter circuit are essentially the same. So hopefully that's a little bit of an insight and maybe helps cover why you may see uh, some converter lockup at idle issues on a 480. We see that most prevalently with triple disc converters and there can be some issues with the converter build that cause it as well. We've seen certain converters are a little more prevalent, but uh, we're hoping that uh, We've solved some of that with talking with some others in the industry to let them know, hey, we need to we need to uh, help solve this because we're doing what whatever can be done and the transmission is being done, and uh, if it continues to occur, it's a it's usually a, a torque converter problem. Another thing I will cover on a 480 is that this bushing, this front stator bushing, does seal the input shaft to separate your converter uh, lockup versus non lockup side. So that bushing needs to be a uh, fairly, fairly good fit. That's, that's another uh, point, an area that can be an issue. So hopefully a little bit of education there and got some more videos for later. Thanks for watching.